Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. I am Michelle. We are feeding at the end of the leash here. We are coming to you live from just south of Silverton, Colorado. I almost said north because we're above an elevation. It's not how that works. But we are coming live from Mullis Campground, actually. We are just now headed outside of it. Um, and we are headed out to attempt a hike. So if you've paid any attention to Colorado, Utah, California, they've gotten record amounts of snow this year. Silverton got an epic 300 inches this year, y'all. So most of the goal hikes that I had planned are still impassable by snow. The hike that we're attempting, that's actually, that's the campground back there, just outside of the campground. There's no reviews on it yet. So I don't know if it's open. So we're gonna try. The whole goal, woo, got tangled in the leash, <laughs> is to see what we can do, see what we can experience. And we're gonna bring you along on this little adventure vlog, hiking vlog. I'll show you the campground, the full campground tour in a little bit in another video. If you can't tell, we're at like 10,000 feet and it's existing is hard, but uh, let's see what we can see today. All right, I'm a little more composed. I don't know if there's anybody else like me, um, especially when you have a high drive dog like him. The first like little bit of a hike is always just chaotic and a little bit of stressful. He's like super anxious and my pack hurts because it's full of water. And to be honest, I'm a bit cranky today. Um, I am suffering some, from some pretty bad altitude sickness that I've never had at this altitude that's never lasted this long. So I'm not sure what's going on. Um, and I go through all these feels of like, oh my God, I'm in like the most beautiful place. I should not be cranky, um, but we're human and we're allowed having the feels. Um, but I know a good hike will get that out. So what we are attempting today is Mollis Lake to Animus River. As of today, mid-June, the only comment I saw was somebody who couldn't complete it because they had a small dog and they couldn't navigate the patches of snow. So we're gonna try it. If we can't navigate it, we're gonna go this way. As you can see, there's a sign. Um, that actually takes you to Mollis Lake and above. Also not open, the road is even close to that, but I know the terrain there and I can navigate it. I've got my yak tracks, I've got my poles. Um, so we're just gonna explore on our feet today, get some of his energy out because he is absolutely wild right now. Um, and just enjoy this beautiful scenery, work on disconnecting, work on mindset, attitude, breathe in, breathe out, all of the things that I love about hiking. Um, but it's gonna be nice and slow today because I don't know what's going on with this altitude sickness. It's not pleasant. <laughs> the first glimpse oh I did of where we're going if you can see the bridge now we can see it there we go well if they didn't save the steepest for last sheesh sheesh that's the trail there's a little bridge I hope he will do it. We made it across, but I couldn't film because I had to help guide him. That was definitely scary. There's a pretty big gap between the two logs and that rotter below was rushing. So good job, Beans. Did it.
All right, guys, we found this great little camp spot to chill out by the river. Um, it's actually kind of a nice little spot he can jump in. Um, he's got a rock. Um, we're right off of the Durango Railroad tracks. I think it doesn't come through till like 11.30 and it's 10.19, so I'm not sure we'll be down here that long because it is a lot warmer since you dropped 2,000 feet. So, don't know, but there's quite a few overlooks as you go up that I'd probably be able to see it, and he might be pretty scared with it so close. So, we're gonna sit here, we're gonna eat a snack, we're gonna enjoy the sound of the water, and just kind of chill, and we will catch you on the way back up. Oh, that's lovely. Are you happy now? I will hop her because your energy's out. Not, nope, nope, get the rubber. I am so glad I chose this trail. I'm still like thinking about just the fact that snow took some stuff away from me and I was so upset about it. But I wouldn't have done this trail had my other trails not been snow covered. And this trail is epic. It is beautiful, it is stunning, it is gorgeous. Um, it is one that's been on my list for a while and I just haven't done because it's taken back seat to other ones. And I think that's just kind of a lesson you can learn is there's always joy and beauty in the adventure. Um, even when things seemingly get taken away, wow, my hair is wild, <laughs> um, you can find so much beauty out there in the the other options and the backups and this is my backup to my backup which is wild and it honestly should have been first on my list so i will leave the trail description or the link below um, for all trails i would definitely rate it as hard we've got a three and a half mile climb out of here um, but i'm very much looking forward to it uh, because it'll let me slow down a little and take in just the sweeping views that happen around every switchback. So um, this campsite has a bunch of bones. <laughs> it's wild. Uh, but uh, it also has the best rock. Oh, I was sitting on that. But this rock, 10 out of 10. 10 out of 10. In my five years of coming to Colorado, I've never seen a marmot. This trip I've seen like five. And if you can hear that really loud chirp that sounds like a smoke detector, that's a marmot. Fiends is afraid of smoke detectors, so therefore he's afraid of marmots. <laughs> and he's like following us. So like we're trying to get away from him and he just keeps following us. <laughs> so we've been down here for like 45 minutes we're now exploring a little other side. Um, I'm trying to be really respectful. You're not supposed to be on or across the tracks, but like to get to other points of the river, you kind of got to cross, like stay right beside it. So being respectful, not being on it, but trying to get to the river with the marmot chasing us. Get off the railroad track. sound really weird and maybe some of you will understand but I love the smell of old railroad ties like that wood it's the same smell that you get when you visit mines especially when they're like warm in the sun there's something about that scent that uh, it's one of my faves <laughs> so I'm just like <sighs> it's warm pines warm railroad ties marmot river Festival Basin, yes! All right, we actually sat down by the river, talked to a super cool dude who's been through hiking and backpacking this area. Just sat, talked for a while, thought maybe the other train would come. I think they're only running, running one right now, but we did get to see one. So I've been here for a long time. I'm decompressed, I'm feeling great. And uh, we're gonna head up the mountain now. Right, Boo? Yeah. 
we are going way up there. Let's go. Nope, second one is running down there right now. <laughs> about 10 minutes too late <laughs> but that's okay we still got to see the first one which is really cool all right one mile in the climb it's a butt kicker that first mile hard-earned baby i think the next half a mile is pretty difficult and then it evens out a little bit and then you have a really steep climb at the end um but this is one of those climbs just because i'm fighting altitude sickness and just altitude in general Let's go by half miles, one half mile at a time, one foot in front of the other. Lots of goo octane, and we'll get there. <laughs> All right, mile two down. That was a much gentler climb than that first mile out. The, uh, I want some shade. Uh, the last, uh, about three quarters of a mile is really steep. I remember we're coming down and I was like, mark that because that's gonna suck coming up. Um, I think we're headed into the pines right now, which is much needed because it got pretty hot. Um, so, all right, here we go, mile three. Bye, Vestal Basin. Hello, pines. We were waiting for this spot. Oh, this is for me, boo. Not for, okay. Can I? Oh, oh my neck. Okay, let's go. Oh, let's put that all over my neck. Go. And we are back in the valley. We just gotta go up there and be done. But first we go down a little, which never seems fair, ever, ever. All right, another mile in. Some miles going great. Ran into some great people. Have this great meadow, fantastic. But now, if you paid attention, said I had three tenths of a mile of straight up. So we are just about there. Last three tenths of a mile, we can do it. And all I want is an apple with cookie butter and a Coke. That is the snack of choice that we will be getting. And even though I have seven tenths, seven, Three tenths of a mile left. Um, no, seven tenths. God, I didn't count the walk from the campground, so have a little bit longer. It's snack time. Back up we go. So up. Whoa. There's a sign if you're gonna go to Molis. Here's a sign if you're gonna go to the campground. So, off to the campground, boo. That was very steep. Whew. That's so beautiful. The last beautiful stretch. Do you want off, bud? Beans. Post hike, cool down. A little drink of water, water. And we just gotta go all the way over there for the car. Camp, sweet camp. Oh, no. Is your 
Close tight can feel good? Yeah? Crunch, crunch. All right, we are many, many hours later after the hike. We got back and I ate lunch and we ended up taking a nap and then it got super windy. So we hopped in the car um, and kind of just chilled, watched a movie. And uh, then we had some like misty snow stuff. So it's been a, a wild bit of an afternoon. Just ate dinner. It was snowing when I made dinner. So um, peanut butter, banana tortilla, it worked, you know. But I wanted to wrap up with, I don't know if you could see the variations of my mood and energy and mindset through that hike. And I just wanted to share something that I struggle with. You know, at the very beginning of a hike or a vacation, you know, this is my first day. I really struggle with this like feeling, this battle that I have between the go, go, go Michelle with the daily routine and the massive to-do list with this Michelle that's just existing and being. And if you follow my Instagram, you know that I put a deposit down on a teardrop um, camper so that I can pursue my dream of working remote with him on the road and taking him to all sorts of places and traveling with my parents who have an RV. And I think I'm tearing up because I'm realizing that the stress that I have felt has been a battle. Nothing like somebody talking about a razor head at the showers to get you out of your, your moment. Um, life, man. But I think part of the stress that I have felt and this burnout that I have felt is the war of being okay with living the unconventional life that I chose. I love my life and I love being single and I love traveling and adventuring with my dog, but it also gets really lonely. And I also battle that I'm almost 40. And all of the should haves, what society says we should have, but I've never been that girl. I've always wanted to do something different. And I am. But there's this this battle of this small town Ohio girl that grew up thinking she's going to be a stay at home mom to the girl who's living this life now. And I think today on the hike, just after, after I hiked for a while and I was just in my moment and then meeting that young man who lives in his van and chooses an unconventional life and he inspired me and he solidified that it's okay to live an unconventional life and it's just as valuable and it's just as awesome and I'm not I'm not letting myself down by choosing adventures and experiences over big houses and the fancy cars and big titles and I guess I'm just realizing that and that is what I love about hiking though is you are forced forced to be in your moment, forced to be by yourself in your thoughts, forced to just be. And then you are thrust into situations where you meet awesome people who inspire you and solidify your path and that that's, that's what you want for your life. And so for me, that's hiking. Hiking does that. For others, it could be meditation or yoga or cycling, I don't know. Um, but for me, it's hiking. It's being out in nature and it's doing vacations like these where I feel so much more like me. But there's always that battle of who should I be versus who I am or who I think I should be. So I just wanted to share that in case anybody else who is wanting to live an unconventional life or who lives an unconventional life or just by happenstance lives an unconventional life that our lives are valuable and special and amazing and we are not less than um, because we choose to live a certain way and that it's okay to be scared to try new things and to go after big things just don't stop going after them so these people are walking back from the shower now and I'm right by the camp road so I am gonna sign off for today <laughs> and it is now sunny and it is beautiful and um, I'm gonna see you tomorrow um, 
weather permitting, and when we go check out some new to me mines in Silverton. So we'll see you there. 